Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. I mean, oh, he's got a little cheeky couple of shirts in the background there as well. I was doing a load of interviews and... Um, we're, Liverpool, we're recording, by the way, now. Go on. <laughs> Liverpool TV when your, your wall's just really bare. So, and everyone, like, everyone was doing, like, um, the interviews from, like, officers and... Because I've just moved into the house, haven't we? So, obviously, nothing's done, really. And um, everyone's doing, like, shirts and cups and... Brilliant. And, bedrooms and all that kind of stuff. I just had nothing on the wall. So I had to go in the garage and dig out the old world cup kids, get the dust off them and stick them at the back. <laughs> to be fair, I'm in this, uh, we're in this rented house and I've literally had, I've been, it, it's not the, it's not the Georgie best, let me tell you. So nice. I've had to run around there. I was trying to find somewhere where he hasn't got a big damp patch on the wall or you know what I mean? <laughs> so I just literally, I've ended up, I'll, I'll, Blow it. I'm sitting here. I've got a picture of my little lad there, which makes it look like it's vaguely football. And there's yeah. like a door not there. And it, there's kids running around mental. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? Because like when they say like find a space in the in the house, most people have got like offices and have been in the house a while. But when it when you've got a new house, you're like you question everything, don't you? So like like I went in the bedroom and then I, I like I had it because the bedroom's done, and then I was like the lads are going to cane me for the wallpaper because obviously I'm <laughs> big, like, I can't have, I can't have this wallpaper in the thing. And then like, I'll go somewhere else, the kitchen. And it's like, nah, the lads will just cane me for the color of the kitchen. Here. I just, <laughs> so I had a bare wall and then they came me for having a bare wall. <laughs> ah, brilliant. So what, so you've been moving during lockdown, have you? No, no, we've, we've moved, um, we moved a year ago. Yeah. And then we moved down to Cheshire, Cheshire. And then um, we've been doing the house as we've been going along. Right. Um, so, so the, I mean, it, we, we literally are doing everything. So the hall stairs and landing and the bedrooms were fair. So they're done. And then we're starting on the kitchen and like a, we've got a boot room. So we're, we're, that's next. And that was what we were doing going into lockdown. So literally everything just come to a grind and halt, didn't it? So. Have you been doing anything yourself or you've got people in to do it or what? Me? DIY. You messing okay. around. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. Mate, I, I remember like my mum moved and I thought, oh, I'll stick this cupboard up for it. And I nailed it to the wall and it looked <coughs> really good. And then she rang me like later on that day and just said, What did you put the um the cupboard up with? And I went, I just nailed it to the wall. And she went, I put all the stuff back in it and it just fell off the wall. It looks <laughs> like that. <laughs> I am. Um... I, I I had a house I had a house in Heswell and um, it was when I when I was just on my own and I super glued you know the toy, you know the toilet holder where you put the toilet roll yes <laughs> things getting on my nerves it kept coming so I super glued it to the tiles and all that and when my when my mate came around to build he literally went out no, the whole wall fell off the whole wall come off with it I was just like oh, <laughs> that's oh. thing, that stuff I mean that must have been years ago because they had this stuff now like it's a cool. Gorilla glue or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it advertised, yeah. Yeah, that pulls walls down, doesn't it? That's <laughs> It's like, I, I bought some of that stuff, and my missus was like, don't be sticking things on walls with that. <laughs> like, you be pulling the wall down. It's like, <laughs> I stay away from all that, mate. So we, we've got a builder. Um, he's, he's done loads of stuff for us, but he, he got stuck in Amsterdam because he works on the rigs as well. So he yeah. got stuck in Amsterdam during lockdown, managed to get back, and then was going to start this job um about a month ago or when they when they released all the builders and that and then um he got a job in china and he's just buggered <laughs> off to china so he's gone so i'm literally waiting for him to come back to to, uh, to get going again what um what's lockdown been like have you just been like everybody else doing nothing or have you been zooming everywhere and all that no no i got um I gotta be honest, you, you know, I mean, you know, my lifestyle is just on the go all the time. So I kind of enjoyed lockdown for the first month. Yeah. I, I was just at home with the kids, like just reconnecting, to be honest. And like, yeah. and because there was no work, was, I, there was no stress. I felt like there was like, mm. you know, like if, if I'm not working, I'm thinking, well, there's work out there. I should be working. <laughs> and like, it's just this thing in me. I've always been the same. And then because there's no work, it was like, well, and I was speaking to all the lads and they were all doing the same thing. So I, I loved the first month. And then after that, mate, it started like really getting to me, grinding me down. And then I've got like this far now and I'm itching to get out. Um, 
I'm just itching to get out, yeah. But the goals... Is there anything in the pipeline? Is it, it, during that time, have you, have you been chatting? I mean, to be fair, the last time I probably spoke to you was, was Cheltenham. You were involved in Cheltenham uh, doing a bit of Paddy Power stuff, I think, with, with Helen Chamberlain. That's right. And, um, and that, was, that was probably right on the, the edge of when it all said, right, that's it, stop. Have you had time for people to go, right, we've got this coming up, Jason, or, you know, my six diary. months time, I mean, time my, doing this, etc. Yeah, my diary was crazy, mate, like like ridiculously crazy because of Liverpool just winning the winning the league or, or yeah. about to win the league. So, I mean, there was so much in the diary for, like, appearances, the club, um, you know, private stuff. So we, we were just, like, chocker. And then... Mm. So I was just literally, you know, doing me thing. And then it literally come to a grind and halt. Yeah, Cheltenham, Cheltenham was probably the last gig um, we probably did um, in terms of going away and doing something. But even looking back, probably Cheltenham shouldn't really have happened, should it? Um, no. But it did. So that was my last gig. Um, I'd, been, I'd been to the Middle East just before that. Where right. Actually, I mean, I've not had a test. And I'm gonna get the antibody test, but I, I I do think I've had it. I do think I've had I've had the virus. In, in what sense? How, I mean, I spoke to our our, our friend Sir Clive Allen. Uh, yeah. I don't know, and and Clive had it. Um, yeah, I, I, rang I spoke him, to Clive. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I rang him out of the blue, and he he said he was at a do in London, I think an awards dinner, and he yeah. came back and he had he had like the worst flu he said he'd ever had. Yeah, and, and he got a test before. I think it was once again. It was very early on before everybody right. was getting tested, and he had it. Yeah. And I was like, and you know, I was saying, what was it like? He said it was just like a flu kind of thing. Why? Why do you think? Why have you been ill? Have you? Yeah, I um, I got back and literally couldn't like I couldn't get out of bed for two days, which is not like yeah. me. I was really like with the flu, like with yeah. the flu symptoms, like it was all in the head. It was nothing on my yeah. chest, it was just all in the head, bang, uh, banging a day. Running yeah. nose, sore throat, um, and literally no energy. Like, yeah. really tired, just wanting to, like, sleep. Uh, I had two days of that, and then come out of it, really, sort of, next couple of days, three days, sort of, shaking it off. Um, but they didn't really think anything of it. And then my missus got, my missus got ill. No, my little yeah. boy got ill. My little boy, my three-year-old, really, yeah. like, temperature. I had him the doctors three times in the week. And they thought it was tonsillitis at one point. Yeah. Um, so he was really bad, all the symptoms. And then my missus lost, uh, had a bit of a head cold, but lost all her smell and taste. Yeah, there's symptoms, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then my mother in law, who's in our annex, because they just bought a house just before lockdown. And obviously they haven't moved because of lockdown. Yeah. Um, she's been tested and she's had it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Gee, where's, gee, so where's, I think what, what, uh, what, uh, I guess the football's coming back. What, what's what's? I don't know how you'll be involved in Liverpool. I mean, it, they, they're going to win the league. It's absolutely amazing. I know how dear they are to your heart. What what happens? Do they do they just play behind closed doors and everybody celebrates. Or what, what's what's the word that's come through to you? Well, to be honest, in the beginning, it was literally. I mean, you'd always think that there's someone in the know, don't you? And and you know, you'd always think I'll. Oh, they know something, something's going to happen. They know dates and all that. They literally didn't know a thing. It was like, I mean, Peter Moore, one of the lads was talking to Peter Moore. He went, I literally don't know a thing. Premier League, government, they, they did, they were just, they just didn't know. So, um, so obviously we were just all hanging by the phone, just waiting, Liverpool TV. You know, we, we were actually, um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I mean, you've got to prepare, haven't you? So I suppose it's all right. But we were literally planning um the tour planning yeah you know oh and absolutely yeah yeah we were planning the, the the trophy lift and the celebrations and everything and how it was going to be done and all this and the roots and how we were going to be involved and where we were going to film it and stuff so that had to happen because it was getting so close and it was inevitable to, to be honest as you know but i mean that, that all comes to a grind and halt and then literally we were week by week we didn't know premier league obviously as you know just didn't know what to do and then uh, probably the last two weeks, um, I spoke to Aldo, and he kind of has been getting an, an in from somewhere, and he he's been hitting the nail on the head. He said, "Listen, it's going to start around the back end of June, um, around the twentieth. So you know, just just get ready." So and then it's all come out now. It's all come out last week, and it we're all kicking yeah. off again seventeenth. We're going to play 
Um, I think the big concerns for Liverpool is the game they win the trophy, which they obviously can't calculate, but they're kind of trying to yeah. sit it out. Uh, Everton and Man City, they're the two games that, that, that I think everybody is scared about because of... Um, you know the policing. You know how you everybody just go basically mad, won't they? Yeah, I mean because it's eased as well because everything's easing off a little bit. I think people are more, will be more inclined to to celebrate it. Um, so I'm not sure what the outcome is about playing. Uh, I know that the games are going to go ahead at Anfield, some of them, but which ones? I don't know. But as far as as we're concerned, um, risk assessment and preparation is all happening now to go back into the studio and to do the games. Not sure where we're going to do the home games from, uh, the Anfield games, possibly the stadium. Um, but obviously, we'll be in the studio for all the other games. So I'm just looking forward to that, really. I, I know you're, you're involved in Liverpool team, but what about Liverpool in general? I mean, um, what's your involvement like? Do, do you do some ambassadorial kind of work for them? Do you go abroad with them, et cetera, et cetera? And what's that, what's that role like for you? Yeah, um, well, as you know, the, the club now, the, the game's moved on, the club's moved on, and we have so many partners and commitments to fulfil. So, you know, there is plenty of work for, for sort of the ex-players. In, in the sense of they, the partners obviously can't get Jürgen Klopp to fly to Singapore or sure. wherever, it, wherever it may be. You know, he, he just doesn't jump on a plane and do that. He hasn't got the time or the, or the commitment, really. Same with the first team. So... Um, so, yeah, so they ask us then. We, we then step in and we'll go. Um, we do, the club have done some fantastic initiatives, um, LFC World for one, where we go and, and bring a, an Anfield experience. So we, we take them, we take like big mock ups. So they'll hire um, like a shopping mall, as you know, in the likes in the Middle East and, and, and in Asia. The weather's, the weather's great, you know, so you can do it outside. There's no worry about rain or anything, bad weather. So they build like, um, a big stage. Like, for instance, the last one we did just before lockdown, we went to India um, and we went to Delhi and we built Jamie Webster come. It was a big stage. We hold a viewing party, so we put the game on, massive screen. We had 2,000 people planned to come, but the, the virus had just started, so it went down to about 800. But um, Malaysia, we had 3,500 people turn up. Um, so 2,000 were supposed to come, watch the game. We go on stage, do a Q&A. Um, and then we'll do, around the days that we're there, we'll do soccer schools for Standard Chartered. We'll do um, appearances. We'll, we'll take clients out as well for, for, um, for dinner and just go and meet them and their clients. Um, and we'll just go and do, go into schools, soccer camps. Um, and we'll just do loads of stuff like that. And then other things we do is the foundation now, which, as you know, most of the big clubs have foundations we do a lot of the charity stuff, so we'll play in Legends games. As you know, we, we had Barcelona coming to Anfield just before the lockdown, around the middle of April, but that got cancelled. Um, so we've played AC Milan, we've played Bayern Munich, we've played Real Madrid home and away, we've played Borussia Dortmund in Hong Kong. Um, and they raised just over a million quid, which the, the club and the foundation then put into various charities. Um, they've also started a, a mental health campaign, so I'm, I'm involved in that as well, where we go around... My last thing we did for them just before lockdown was we went to a school in Liverpool and they, the, all the schools around the surrounding areas all brought six or seven kids. So there must have been about 40 kids in a room. And then we basically do a Q&A with the kids and try and get on their level and, and just teach them awareness, really, of, you know, if, if you're struggling, if you're getting bullied, if there's problems at home, then you can go to a friend, you can go to a teacher. There are people you can come and talk to. And we try and show them signs, um, you know, if they're not eating properly or if, you know, the, the, the voice in the head is telling them all things that they shouldn't be doing and, you know, they're feeling very vulnerable, what that feels like, you know, just making them aware that, you know, there are people there and the support there and the club are heavily involved in that. So really busy. I mean, it's not just the only thing to do, obviously, but, you know, I do private stuff like, for instance, the FA might ring me and say, can you come down to Wembley and, you know, do the charity shield for us where I'll be a guest and I'll speak in one of the lounges for them. Or I might do a Paddy Power thing at Cheltenham, which we were talking about before. So, yeah, so just really, really busy. Just, um, yeah, just keep myself busy. It's fantastic. I, I um, before, before we came on to start chat, I saw a very emotional documentary you did about mental health. I was going to talk about it a bit later on, but might as well talk about it now because 
touched on it. Um, it was it was a, a personal story, but it was also a, a, about helping other people. Um, how emotional did you find that when you were doing it? And and when you were doing it, did you find or did you uncover things about yourself you perhaps didn't know beforehand? Yeah, it was it was bittersweet. Um, you know, it, I had a, I had a great I got to admit I had a great time doing it. I mean, the book, you know, it wasn't a money making thing at all. I mean, bloody hell. You know, Robbie Fowler makes the millions and Steven Gerrard on a book and stuff, you know, Jason McAteer probably, <laughs> I probably have to put my hand in my pocket to be honest, mate. <laughs> um, but I just, you know, I just, I've just lived a very privileged life, you know, I've worked hard to, to get where I am, but it, I have been very privileged and, and met some great people and had some great stories and I've got some great experiences and I just wanted to put it, just document it really. It was more yeah. of a, a documentation thing for me and, you know, I spoke to someone in Ireland that I was close to a journalist and a very good writer. And he said, let's not do it for you. And um, and we sat down, we got going. And, you know, as, as you know, you know, we're pretty similar. You know, I'm talking about things that happened in, in 97 and they actually happened in 95. You know, it's just <laughs> the memory is just not quite what it was. And, you know, and he's like, your timeline's like two years out. You didn't move till 96. And I'm like, Really? And then you, it, it, I like a jigsaw, you're filling in the gaps and stuff. Um, but you, you get it all out there. And then, you know, the, you, get, you get to the point of the book where it, it can't all be about, you know, silly stories and funny stories. There has to be a sense of, you know, I think with books, there's a, there's a sense of sensationalism to sell it where you dig someone out or you dig a situation out and you name names or you, you'd have a, a view which is kind of out there about something which you know might bring the newspapers to sensationalize it or whatever yeah i was never in it for that it was never you know i, I i've got no, no stories i you know and, and the ones i have are, are private and are not for other people but it's not for a book but you know there was enough in there to do but i, I got to the end and it was kind of he, he he just turned around to me and he just said listen we can't end the book like this you know we we need a we need an end, you know, your football career doesn't, it doesn't just stop. And it didn't really, you know, it, my life become very difficult when football stopped. Oh. And actually that was the, that was the point where I had to sit down and think, do I put it all out on the table? This very private matter. And, sure. and I said to him, listen, let, let, I'll tell you all about it and let's see how we go. And then you shape it into what you want. And then we'll read it as the end of the book. And if we think it's, it's appropriate, then we'll put it in. And we sat there and we went through about a week of, of, of doing this because it was quite tough, but it was the closest thing that probably I could relate to, to, to having been in, in therapy, you know, having gone in for six months, not gone yeah. in, but gone to see someone for six months. It was the closest thing to that because you, you open it all up again and you start talking about it. But it, it's kind of like when, when you're actually speaking to someone in therapy, you live in that moment. When you're doing a book, you kind of, it's kind of like me. I felt like it was me talking about somebody else, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That, that person that went, yeah, yeah. and I was documenting it, and it was, it was like that, where at the time it's obviously very different. But, you know, he, he wrote it very sensitively, and, you know, we sat down, and he just went, listen, this is going to help a lot of people. You know, the, people are going to read this book and, and see that, you know, people like yourself go through these problems that every people who have got, you know, normal jobs and, you know, everyday life just gets on people and people can relate. So it's going to help a lot of people. And I said, right, look, let's do it. And we, and we left it in. And, um, you know, I, I was I was quite proud of the book at the end of the day. It was it was a nice thing to do. And, you know, but as far as the, the mental health stuff, you know, from that, we then sat down with Liverpool TV. And, and as you know, we've... It, it's funny, little independent TV companies, as you, as you know better than anybody else, you have this bunch of, of young people who have got great ideas that sometimes at the big companies don't get heard. But at the little yeah. independent companies, they might take a punt on them and say, well, go ahead and, and have a go at it. And we've got some, some fantastic forward-thinking lads who love documentaries, like Phil mm. Reed, um, Chili, um, you know, Matt Owen, you know, all people that just, just see things from outside the box. 
And Peter McDowell and Claire Rourke just got got hold of me and they said, listen, we want to do this documentary. What do you think? We sat down and Phil Reeve got involved in Chile and um, they shaped it a certain way. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And it took about six months and it was the most amazing piece because I'm just the, you know, I'm just the story in it. You know, it, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. And I was, you know, so proud of a lot of them because they've done an, an amazing job with that documentary. It was brilliant. What, what reaction have you had to it? Um, amazing. Um, really good. I mean, we were up for a few awards. Uh, we were up for a, a really big award. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Oscar. Not that big. Not that big. <laughs> Uh, or the BAFTA, it wasn't that, it was the next one, the next one down. <laughs> the next one down, yeah. Pretty good though, pretty good. Yeah, like the Novello or something like that. Um, <laughs> anyway, it was a really, really big award and Bobby Robson won it and we come second, uh, but it was in it, an award with six uh, nominees and we come second. Thought, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I've seen the Bobby Robson thing as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's... Um, yeah, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it, it, it yeah, it, you know, the... The attention it got was amazing, you know, straight after, obviously, everyone jumped on it, doesn't it? And then, you know, Mental Health Helpless Aware Week, which was, I think, last week, wasn't it? Um, yeah. But, you know, it always comes up then. But I'm still getting people through social media and letters to the club just saying, thanks, it's really helped me and, you know, I can relate to it and stuff. And, you know, it's it, it's been really, really good. And then the club, the club have now sort of not off the back of that, but we, we had a, I think the club felt there was a need to pursue it uh, because of the response. And that's where the foundation have taken on the mental health campaign. Um, Brilliant. You know, so we, we do a lot of things, you know, fr from that, um, from that documentary, you know, things have followed on from that with the club, which is, which is great. And it's important as well. That, listen, fantastic. Um, what, um, uh, I, I know, I mean, we've worked together a lot in the Middle East and you've, you've traveled all over the world. Does it still surprise you how, not just the interest in, in the Premier League, but the interest in Liverpool, does it, does it, I mean, it never ceased to amaze me when I went to these places and, you know, in Egypt, obviously, Mo Salah and what have you, but for people who haven't been over it, the, the interest in Liverpool, the interest in the Premier League is astonishing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's an unbelievable product. They've done tremendously well, you know, creating this product and getting it around the, around the world. I mean, it generates so much money and we know a lot goes back into to grassroots, um, you know, from that. But as just talking from a Liverpool perspective, being an ambassador, we, we, we do, you know, as you've said, you know, we visit all the corners of the world and, you know, it, it's phenomenal the support that the football club has for it, for a team that hasn't won the Premier League for, for 30 years to sustain this this interest and this following. It, it, it's like a cult. It's like a cult following. You know, the generations now, you know, the older generations I totally understand because they were lifting European Cups and league titles and, you know, Chelsea Shields and FA Cups and, and having them great players. But then there was that little period of uncertainty where the club didn't really know which direction it was going. You feel like the support might waver a little bit, but it just it's just got stronger. It's just got stronger and stronger. And, you know, we know football is a way of life and it's credit to the older generation to bring the younger ones through supporting the football club. I mean, it, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, it, it makes me laugh, right? Because we, we, we go away and, like, you can have... Like I said, you can have like 3,000 people turn up with a reviewing party. and Something might take your eye. And I remember, I remember we went to Vietnam and I, I just looked out at the, at the coach and there must have been like three or 400 people. And this fella just had a sign going, we love you all though. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all though? <laughs> it was like, it was like you know, I, I'd understand it was Gerard or Salad or Fowler, but it was like, <laughs> not was like we love you all though. He wasn't even with us. All though wasn't even with us. It was just like, it's got this massive cult following. Um, and obviously now, you know, with the Champions League and Jürgen and, and, the, um, and the Premier League about to be won, it, it, it's just got stronger and stronger. And, you know, the last four years, certainly for me, has been, has been the best time, apart from playing at the football club, the best time I've ever been involved in it. And I, I've been behind the ropes um, and seeing how it's worked and seeing how it's been built and progressed and, you know, it, some of the stories that I've watched, you know, personal stories of Jordan Henderson, 
you know, how he's come on, how the club's growing, you know, mixing with different partners and CEOs and mixing with Peter Moore and, you know, picking his brains about different things when you go for dinner because he's so open and, you know, listening to how he, he was in an EA Sports and then you've got Billy Ogan, the commercial manager who has an American background and how they see things, the Americans and how the owners work. It's just, it's just fascinating. And, you know, it's just, you know, hope, I just hope I'm, I'm still in it in, in the next five years because I'm just, I just find it amazing, the business side of it and how it grows. And then obviously on top of that, you know, I work with a fantastic bunch of people at Liverpool TV who, who make great things. So the whole thing for me has just been, just been amazing. Thanks. That was brilliant. Really appreciate it. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. I was going, do you know what I was going to do? I've got like, tell us about the John Barnes story, sticking the bikes in the thing. But I, do you know what we'll do? We'll come back and revisit all that at some point. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, we need, we need, in fact, we nearly won an award, didn't we, for our, was it the World Cup? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I, I still think that the World Cup stuff and the, the European champion, certainly the best stuff I've ever done on oh, TV. Oh, it's amazing. You still it's, haven't it's done like, the, um, you still haven't done It's the show no one's ever seen. <laughs> I know. You still haven't done the, um, what's it called, the show reel? I thought we were doing the show reel. What about, what about the, um, I mean, remember when we did the Jaws thing? When Suarez bit the, um, was it Chiellini in the world? <laughs> and for that, it was absolutely brilliant. But I love the Euros with the weather. Oh, and and well, Matt I mean, Stewart just written a book and all. I, I loved it. I, 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 it was that, the happiest TV time I've had. And also, the, you know, kicking the ball to, uh, what's his face? Little Paul McVeigh with his Aladdin slippers on. <laughs> oh, it was just, I mean, every day is like something. I mean, it looked like it was made up on the spot. And but was, that was its genius, though, wasn't it? That was the genius, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, but it worked out that way. And it just, I mean, I, I always remember when, was it the lad from Morocco? We had him on to talk about Morocco. And I, and I was trying to, he spoke perfect English. And I was like, why do you think <laughs> Morocco? <laughs> you went perfect English to talk to him normal. And I tried to do it again, I couldn't do it. And there was just so many, like... It was brilliant. It, it was a... Uh, it was a fantastic show. It was a fantastic Brilliant. show. Yeah. As you said, that no one's seen. Apart from people in Australia. Yeah, who loved it. Listen, uh, take care and uh, yeah. I'll give you a bell, okay? Yeah, and, stay um, in touch, mate. I will do. And uh, I mean, we, we're doing a series of these things. I, I, I genuinely didn't think that that interview was going to go that way. But we'll, we'll do another one some down the line with, uh, you know, with some funnies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that, that was brilliant, mate. Love I'm to all, okay? Yeah, love you, mate. See you later. <laughs> Bye, mate. See you, pal. Bye. Bye.